to explore one dimension of the concept of independence that you introduced us to in the first of these videos. Mm -hmm. And that is the concept that independence may be compromised not just by financial relationships, but other relationships. This seems never ending, that because I knew you in school, that can, am I never independent of you after that? Well, uh, I think what the New York Stock Exchange was attempting to say is that any of these factors might be uh, relevant mm -hmm. uh, and indeed might be determinative mm -hmm. of, the de of the decision as to whether a director is independent. Uh, but the point being, they need to be explored. For example, familial relationships um, can be so strong as to override any objectivity that the director might have mm -hmm. and therefore uh, might imperil their independence as a director. Mm -hmm. And that's important for other directors to understand. Mm -hmm. uh, and in, in making, as the board must, a determination, an affirmative determination of that director's independence on the board. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you said you've seen a variety of potential relationships like this that others might not think of. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about philanthropic kinds of uh, compromises or conflicts? Well, I think we have a great example uh, in the philanthropic area from the Enron case. Mm -hmm the CEO of Baylor Medical Center mm -hmm. was on Enron's board and uh, uh, Baylor was a major recipient of largesse from uh, mm -hmm. Enron. It was probably its major patron. Mm -hmm. And uh, that director sitting on the board, sitting as he was on the board, uh, was he truly independent uh, in terms of being able to express uh, in an untrammeled way uh, a dissenting view of what Enron was doing. And the board should have been asking about how dependent is mm -hmm. Baylor Medical Center on the monies that they receive from Enron. Uh, would that enable this director to serve in an independent way? Mm -hmm. What about the area of friendship? Does that create a potential such as this for a uh, compromised independence? It, it could, but I, don't, I think it's unlikely. Uh, it's certainly a very common situation. Mm -hmm. I think where it does create potential questions is where one director is, uh, I'll use the word beholden mm -hmm. to the other, under some sense of obligation. Mm -hmm. Now, that could arise in a whole bunch of different contexts. Uh, one that I think is a fairly common context is where they have uh, a common financial interest. Let's say um, one director is uh, the general partner of a major um, mutual fund or, mm -hmm. or investment fund uh, in which the other director is participating. Well, you know, uh, there, that, mm -hmm. in, that relationship needs to be explored mm -hmm. by the board in determining the independence of, the, uh, of each of those directors. Mm -hmm. When you say these need to be explored, need to be disclosed, mm -hmm. it keeps raising the question about where the threshold is. Uh, is the threshold met if I'm on a board and my board's about to invest in a company that my son-in-law has started, for example? Mm -hmm. um, you know, how, how do we determine? How does a board determine? As we've said uh, in, in a previous program, uh, really the solution here is disclosure. Yeah, That is the solution because uh, it allows the other directors to have a thoughtful discussion uh, mm -hmm. uh, and reach a conclusion about whether they feel the circumstances for that conflict are sufficiently uh, pronounced that it would warrant uh, taking action to, to either challenge the independence of mm -hmm. that director or it, it, perhaps more, more minimally to recuse the director from participating in a particular decision. Mm -hmm. Would that influence your ability to rely on the business judgment rule if you had such a relationship? Well, if it were disclosed and approved by the remaining directors, it would not. Mm -hmm. If you fail to disclose uh, and you participate in the approval of that underlying transaction, mm -hmm. uh, the business judgment rule would not protect you. Is this one case where the board boards need to be more aggressive in addressing these other types of relationships that might exist? I, I think so. I, I mean, I think it's important that the board understand that the determination of independence and interestedness uh, in the whole conflicts area requires a more thoughtful uh, uh, investigation mm -hmm. of all of the circumstances that, that may surround an individual director. Not just the financial relationships that they might have with the corporation in question, but all of these other dimensions that you, you accurately uh, quoted from the New York Stock Exchange rules. 
great. 